And we're live. Welcome again to another edition of the Between Two Wheels podcast. This is Tyler Yonke uh, coming to you from Monday, July 9th, 2018, the Tour de France 2018. Tour de France, we are doing stage three, the team time trial recap. It'll be a quick one today. Um, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get to this, but uh, court went great. And uh, I came home a little early to see what we do. All right, so we can get to it here. Um, once again, check us out. We're also on YouTube live streaming, so you can do that. You know, part of this is not so much. Uh, well, I'd like to I'd like to finally get the chat up and going and get some people joining in and have some conversation that way. But uh, it's also an easier way to do some of the video streaming. <clears throat> Reduces the editing, makes it this so I can get it out nice and quick. Um, all right, so today we had a 35-kilometer team time trial from Cholet to Cholet. It was a counterclockwise loop going around the city. And Cholet, what do you know about that? Well, this whole region, first of all, the Vendee region. Um, uh, this was once a military capital of the Vendee. Uh, Vendee was kind of the epicenter of one of the largest counter-revolutionary uprisings during the French Revolution. So that's why everything kind of is uh, about that at this point, and it's in that department, the Vendee department. So. Um, other than that, I don't know too much. I just look some things online and check them out. I am going to try to get together with our friend uh, Jonathan Scriven, who lives over in France. He's actually in D.C. right now, but we will um, talk about some of these regions that we have over in France and get his ideas on um, the terrain and some other that. So look forward to that coming up. However, right now we've got uh, the team time trial today, 35 kilometers. You know, this, this one was... Um, I, I also saw a thing today. They had it on... Uh, on the NBC app talking about the history of the team time trial. In 1978, I think they had a 150 kilometer team time trial. Imagine that. These guys are out doing, you know, 18, 15 kilometer time trials in the Swiss and the and the Dauphiné. Here we have the one 35 today. They're doing 150K. Um, some of the other interesting things to note when you look back on the team time trial, team 711, they came in I think it was the 86 tour was their first one and I'm not sure if that's the one or I think that was the one that they had where it was a complete mess for the team time trial. Uh, I think Alex Stita had been in the yellow jersey and then they had a split stage that one early in the day and then they had the team time trial. They were wrecking all over the place. It was kind of an embarrassment. Um, but anyway, I didn't see any good wreck, any wrecks at all today, which is probably a good thing. You don't want to see that. I remember Garmin a few years ago, I want to say the Vuelta. Dan Martin was with them and he hit the uh, a pothole or something and it was a pretty nasty wreck because it can really take out your team. Speaking of guys that were taken out, you had uh, on the time trial today, Lawson Craddock was a concern of mine that was he going to be able to hang on and it looks like he not only hang, hung on, he, he only lost about two minutes and we'll get to that in a little bit here. Uh, so anyway, the profile itself looked pretty tough. It had some undulation. Uh, it was some curvy stuff to begin with, which made, once again, I was thinking of Lawson, just he's in the bars, he's able to get around and they're going through all these roundabouts to start with, but um, he did fine. And you know, being in France, they were focusing more on AG2R and then obviously some of the, the, the bigger teams that went. So I didn't see EF Education First um, getting a lot of play on TV, but they did a good time as well. And we will talk a little bit about that. So there was a few kickers, some climbs right at the second time, um, time spot today, time check. And that gave some of the guys some trouble. Uh, I saw um, Sagan come off, which was kind of a, a, an interesting thing. You know, um, depending on when you're watching some of these, Sagan has this lore. It reminds me of the Jens, Jens Voigt, some of the announcing where he could do no wrong. And I, I like Sagan. He's, he's great and he's interesting. But, you know, he, he got dropped today. And, you know, sometimes you have bad legs and he's not, he, you don't normally can do a good time trial and you wouldn't expect him to get beat. His team did put up a pretty good time. So, but still in the yellow jersey, it was a little interesting because you think that, that you think that's what they were fighting for today, uh, but it didn't quite come out. You know, and another one that got dropped there was Gaviria. And I think that might have messed his team up because it looks like either he got split off from midfield uh, because they didn't really show it on the camera work but he might have got split off from his team and either caused a separation which they had to have the guys come around or he was getting dropped and the cameras came back uh, either way that might have cost them because um, he quick step was very close to shutting the door and actually getting the win so let's go through some of the the results from he had today uh, bmc team sky 
Uh, these teams were all going off early due to the problems that they had on stage one, uh, losing the time, and uh, their team was uh, not high overall in the team order. Matter of fact, Wanty Group Gobert, I think they were second to last. Uh, so, you know, you, and, and then they were second to last in the overall, but second to last in the starting today. So, Team BMC rolls through one of the first times. I think Team Sky went before them. And then BMC rolls through. They then get in the hot seat. They beat Team Sky by four seconds. Um, then you had quick step floors. Well, before that, you had some of the other teams coming through. Mitchell and Scott, uh, Team Sunweb. They're closing nine seconds, 11 seconds for Team Sunweb. Team Sunweb, I believe, is the defending world time trial, team time trial champion. So uh, obviously, you were expecting them to do well. Plus, they have the big motor, Tom Dumoulin. Uh, Mitchell and Scott with a good time obviously needed that for Yates and you know it looks like they come to the tour a little bit controversial for their team picking uh, who are they going to take they, they left out Caleb Ewing so they have all their eggs in the basket of Yates which means they need to uh, produce well in the team time trial not that Caleb would have done any different for that but they you know he's he's the overall it's what it is they're not going to get some stage wins and I think Caleb would have been fun to watch uh, in general, I'm just a little selfish. I wanted to see him race in this one, but um, I think he would have been doing just fine in this race overall, anyway. But either way, they have it. It's Mitchell and Scott. They did. They did a good time here. Uh, Team Sunweb, EF Education first. They pull out 35 seconds. I think that was a really good time for them, considering uh, Lawson's hurt. You know, you got eight-man teams now. Uh, Rigoberto Uran is still in there. He hasn't had any put a foot aside yet. He's been doing fine. Um, and so that's that's a pretty good Bora Hansgrohe. They came in seventh at 50 seconds. Atush, uh, Astana 51 seconds. Katusha Alpeson 52. Movie Star at 53. And then it came in the last team that was uh, close there was Quick Step, and they were closing the door. And I think uh, they needed to uh, BMC needed to get them by about five or six seconds to make sure that uh, Van Avermaet was going to be in the yellow jersey. He did so, and they got them by seven seconds. So Quick Step comes in third. And, you know, the, the grouping there, when you look at that, it's, you know, think about 35 kilometers, team time trial, and you've got just 53 seconds separating first through 10th. Uh, 11th place was Brown Bahrain Merida at 106, and then down to uh, Kofidis and losing 323. So I was listening to um, David Miller today talk about this, where he, that, he said that's what he actually predicted before the stage. You're going to see the top teams because they're so well drilled. Uh, do a lot of this in training that in the, in the course being so tough that it's going to somewhat equalize them out. You don't have, you know, for those individuals, you have Froome and Jumelin and some of these other guys, they would put big gaps. But the way you're going to see these top 10 teams, they can only go so fast to hold on to four guys. And therefore, the grouping is, you know, 53 seconds between the top, which kind of equaled out when you look at it for some of these guys that are losing time, you know, BMC, Richie Port ends up losing you know, around 50 some seconds on stage one, same with Froome. And then they're kind of gaining around 50 plus seconds to a lot of these main guys. So it's equalizing it out, but it's also giving a few guys just a little bit advantage over Froome and Port, which is, which is interesting to see. Okay, uh, like I said, Kofidis uh, shit the bed at 323. Uh, they were a minute back from even uh, Wanty Group Gobert coming in. So I don't know what the deal was with them. But then let's look at the uh, overall GC. So you had Greg Van Avermaet coming in with the yellow jersey now. Uh, first place, TJ Van Garderen tied on time. Second place, Garrett Thomas, third. You know, his little time bonus he has got the other day. Uh, Philippe Jobert, fourth. Bob Youngles, fifth. Alaphilippe, sixth. Tom Dumoulin. Now I'm just going to go through the, the GC guys that are kind of up there. Dumoulin, seventh at 11 seconds. Rigoberto Uran. 10th at 35 seconds. Jacob Fuglesong, 51 seconds uh, for 13th place. You have uh, Richie Port, 14th at 52. Valverde, 53. Landa, 53. Froome, 55. So, you know, Froome's still 55 back. From, well, let's look at Van Avermaet. So, I'm giving these to Van Avermaet, and well, Thomas is only three seconds off. Is he really the next? I don't know. It will, it'll be seen whether he's actually supporting Froome or if he kind of takes a dig for himself. But then 11 is Tom Dumoulin, and then 35 is Rigobert Uran. So between 11th and 10th, you've got 10, 11 seconds. Take that off of these. You know, now those guys, Froome is maybe only 40 seconds back, 20 seconds back. Um, Adam Yates at a minute. Um, Vincenzo Nibali at 106. So once again, make that adjustment off of 11 or 30, whatever you think the top guy really is. Bardet at 115, Kreuzwick, Rojlik, you know, they didn't do so well today. Um, Lotto and El Jumbo. 
uh, but it's not so bad. And then Mullima 1, 116. So if you got, you didn't hear your top GC guy in that list, he didn't have a good day. Dan Martin, he's one of them specifically. Uh, Nairo Quintana. Nairo has obviously been hampered by the early week. He could have been up there with Landa, but he, he due to the cracking his wheels on stage one. So you had some winners today, obviously BMC, Sky, I think EF Education first, Mitchell and Scott, kind of all in there. Lawson Craddock, only losing two minutes. Uh, from me and I saw him pulling through and doing some work so good for him he helped that out some losers on the day obviously Dan Martin um, we've got uh, Nairo like I said Sagan Gaviria now they're losers in the fact that those two that they got dropped from a team um, they could have been you know Sagan still could have been close to it and which means in the next few days when they have the sprinting they could still be you know close to the GC uh, but with that not being the case and they're coming off, it's going to be, you know, and maybe it makes a little different effect too. If they're closer up there, which I think BMC would actually like, because then perhaps these other riders teams, uh, Sagan and, and uh, Bora Hansgrohe and Quickstep might do a little bit more work on some of these flat stages because not only does it possibly get them the stage win, but they can might maybe move back into the yellow jersey. But those guys have been coming off that. I think Michael Matthews is a top real sprinter up there <clears throat> and Van Avermaet. But there are some days that are going to actually bode well for both of those. So you could see Van Avermaet holding this yellow jersey through uh, stage nine, which we go into Robay. Uh, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the yellow jersey and th some of the controversy. I did listen, I, I look, I listen to a lot of different podcasts and stuff because I get entertained and any little nuggets you get from here and there. But I'm also a little bit, uh, opinionated myself so uh, I did a little digging today so why was Van Garderen not given the yellow jersey over Van Avermaet well first of all Van Avermaet came across the line first so that's the reason since they're um, on time but it's deeper than that because I listened to uh, Lance Armstrong is complaining saying oh you know they made this decision and Van Avermaet slides across first and I'm sure you know everyone's happy and fine but you know deep down Van Garderen's never had the yellow jersey before so he's and he might, you know, Van Garderen comes across some of the interviews I've heard over this this last week a little, uh, I don't know, he needs to soften up maybe a little bit. Uh, however, what it actually is, if they're tied on time, it's the aggregate, I believe, of the um, stages before. So Van Avermaet um, beat TJ Van Garderen on stage one. They were 55 and 56 respectively placing. Um, stage two, Van Avermaet was 24th. TJ was 52nd. So I don't think today's staging had as much because I think it goes back to the previous. So um, I don't think it was as much of a decision. It was going to be Van Avermaet, so just let him roll. All right, so no, not really a big deal. Lance didn't get it right. Um, he got a lot of things wrong yesterday too. Uh, I don't want to go through them all because I'm, I'm sure, and, and maybe Brian Zimney, when you actually listen to this, you're going to come through with a bunch of things that I got wrong, which I do all the time. Um, a few other things that make me go, hmm. So Lawson Craddock, like I said, he only gets uh, two minutes lost on his team. Pretty impressive. Uh, Sagan got dropped on the climb. That was a little disconcerting to hear or to see. And it was also disconcerting to hear the some of the announcers talk about the like, he can do no wrong and then he gets dropped. And I don't know what they say about that. But one of the things I did find out today uh, is really interesting. I cruised it through different podcasts and I saw that Bradley Wiggins has a podcast out now for the tour. It's uh, out through Eurosport, and it's, I don't know, just the Eurosport or tour with Bradley Wiggins. You could Bradley Wiggins Show, I think is what it is. So it's two Eurosport hosts um, giving it with Bradley. And they went over, you know, stage one. I'm not sure if it went to stage two. I was having a tough time with it because it's too formulaic. It's very, it's very British um, newsy. So you've got a host, you've got a female host, and then you've got Bradley Wiggins in studio and you know, they're leading them along. So it's not at least give it up for Lance. He kind of leads his own show and it's what it is. But so anyway, Brad's in there and then they're talking about Froome being released on the Selbutamol and the results of that testing. And uh, it was the elephant in the room, because uh, he's talking about how all this negative Sky, you know, someone, so, so many people are against Sky and they just hate Sky, Sky haters, da, da, da. But no one ever wants to talk about some of the reasons that Sky is disliked. It's not necessarily because they win, it could be, but it's also because, I mean, Jiffy Bag, uh, Bradley Wiggins, you know, you can maybe give a little bit more detail as to why they dislike you and the fact that 
you and your Jiffy. And he was talking about TUE stuff. And I'm like, the, they're just tiptoeing around it and they have to kind of, it, it's a tough spot I'm sure for those hosts because they say one thing, hey, you know, what about you and your Jiffy bag? Um, it's gonna be a new host the next day. So check it out. I'll, I'll, try, to, I'll try to review it a little bit more and um, take a look at it and, and give you some, a little bit more feedback. All right, so stage four coming up, uh, 195 kilometers from La Boile to Zarazu, 192 kilometers flat, it looks, another kind of boring stage so maybe check your local listings at the time to make sure you don't get up too soon you know the best is sometimes i wake up in the morning i flick on the tv and this this is what happened on stage one although i did go back and re-watch a bunch of it just so i'd be a little bit more informed but when i woke up turned the tv on it was legitimately 11k and uh damar was chasing that is when all the everything was happening right then i mean i actually the port had already been dropped, Yates had been dropped, but I, I got the gist of what was going on. So the best is to try to time that, come in, you've got tomorrow 97 kilometers, you got a sprint spot, okay? So 97.5K in, uh, about 100K left to go, you're gonna have a first sprint point. Um, we're gonna see, you know, unless there's a break off, you're gonna see your normal situation. Then there is a KOM at 135.5. This is up the Côte de saint jean le Prete. It's 800 meters at 7.8%. So it's a nice little jaunt at just under a K, but it's not gonna be anything to, to wrap up to, to make the, 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 the sprinters have any problem. And then you've got uh, the bonus time sprints uh, coming at one, around 155 kilometers. So 57 K to go. Um, and that, you know, are we gonna see, Garrett, let's take a look at the top here again. So maybe TJ, Maybe you'll see TJ, TJ trying to get up the road and get the bonus point sprint so he can uh, get the little uh, get the yellow jersey. Otherwise, you've got Thomas three. I mean, Thomas could take the yellow jersey too. I don't know if he wants to. I mean, he took a time bonus the other day. They got him close. Uh, Philippe Jobert, um, he's at five seconds and Jungles at seven. You know, those guys would have to not only win the bonus, but then they'd have to be in the top three for the final. And I don't think Jobert is going to be able to get that. Um, TJ. Yeah, I, th I think TJ's got the sprint for this. He seems like the kind of guy that could put down about 800 watts and uh, maybe winds it up from like 5K out. He might have a chance. Other than that, um, flat day, you're going to see the sprinters uh, be a part of it um, and not in too much excitement. So that's Tuesday. Wednesday, we have, let's take a look at the Wednesday profile. It's a little bit more choppy. And I think the final is, that's from Laurent to Quimpa. And it's 204.5K. You've got one, two, two cat four climbs about midway. And then you've got two cat three climbs about the last uh, third of the race here. And another uh, three category climb. climb. So you got one at 1.9, 3K, 2.2K. So you've, right now you have Dion Smith in the polka dot jersey. Um, he's got a good chance tomorrow coming in. He's got one point. Uh, Le Printier has one point. Is that the guy? I'm not sure what his name is. Uh, he's got one, I'm thinking that might be the, the UCI uh, president's name. Anyway, he's got uh, one point as well. So you may see one of those two guys trying to get it, but I think you're going to see on the next day on Wednesday, you're gonna see a good battle to finally start getting some, and it's not gonna be a real climber. The, the, leaders, the climber's jersey hasn't been going to a real climber for quite some time, but you're going to see, uh, you know, maybe uh, Kalmajan, getting him out there maybe one of these wanty group gobert guys again but i think kalmajan that might be a good day for him you might see him out uh he does good on those kind anyway and i think i got to look at the the finishing profile on the last 5k to see what that is like yeah usually we get that from the latour website um and see if we can find out how that's it oh anyway why am we doing that Otherwise, you have Wednesday, Thursday, and then the next few weeks. We're still looking for anything until we get to um, Perry Bay, and then and then uh, that's stage nine. So we've still got a while to go. All right, uh, thanks. Just a short one today. Thanks for joining in. Once again, um, give us some feedback. Um, I will try to put out Wednesday um, is possible. Tomorrow we should be able to do this. Maybe we do the same time in the afternoon. Um, although I'm going to do a ride. And then Wednesday, we'll try to do one on Wednesday, depending. I have a trial set on Wednesday, but there's a good chance tomorrow works out. We'll settle it. And then I will maybe try to do a midday, somewhere around 3, 3.30. 
Um, try to do that again in the afternoon and uh, maybe Thursday and Friday we'll try to get them right after the stage is over so somewhere around the 9 10 and maybe even get Kurt and Chris involved not in this space but maybe in my office uh, anyway thanks again for tuning in checking out the team time trial why don't you give us uh, some feedback about what your favorite uh, part of the team time trial was today mine was uh, when it was over anyway thanks again for joining in